Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're checking out a couple interesting radio gadgets with somewhat of an espionage or spy theme. First off, we have this thing that I picked up at an estate sale, and it is labeled multi-channel receiver from Spy Camp. So I thought that was really cool. I could not pass this thing up, even though I don't 100% know what it is. I opened it up when I got home, and it's apparently, again, a multi-channel monitor. It goes from 25 up to 1150 megahertz. So that's a pretty wide range of the radio spectrum for something that looks fairly basic. This is definitely old. This looks like it's from the 70s or 80s. Um, yeah, it's definitely an antique at this point. And in fact, if we look more closely inside the cover, it is labeled February 11th, 1974 and it looks like it belonged originally to the Minneapolis Gas Company. We've got some uh, pre-selected channels here with various frequencies, 48 megahertz, 451, 12 megahertz, 3 megahertz. These two are kind of interesting because the other label says that it bottoms out at 25 megahertz. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure which one is more accurate. And then we've got 290 megahertz. It looks like we have some crystal oscillators in here. And we've got all kinds of cool analog controls that I barely understand, so I'm looking forward to giving this thing a try. Now around the same time, I stopped in at a local military surplus store and I picked up this interesting manual, Electronic Counter Countermeasures. And um, this is kind of a weird book. It's not structured like a book. It's, um, it's set up like these weird question and answer slides. Um, I don't know, maybe they thought the average army dude would understand this better than just a lot of fine print text. I'm not really sure, but uh, it's an interesting uh, guide here to military communications, to avoiding uh, electronic countermeasures, some cloak and dagger type stuff. Uh, not sure how much we'll get into this book, but I just thought it was fun. We also have the modern day version of this multi-channel, multi-band receiver, the software-defined radio. This one is from Nualec, and this is the Hack RF one This is a very flexible software-defined radio that will not only receive but also transmit and it goes up to I think like six gigahertz so it is much more capable much more flexible than this antique thing from the 70s now it is a little bit more expensive this thing only cost me like fifty dollars this thing is several hundred dollars but I think it's well worth it it's got a lot of really cool features and I have yet to even scratch the surface on what the Hacker F1 can do so we're gonna try to get into that a little bit in this video as well now, each of these radios comes with a basic stick antenna, or extendy telescoping antenna. This one's uh, a little bit stuck, but I think we can get it freed up. And that's okay for very basic things, but if we want to receive more radio signals, if we want to get the most out of these radio receivers, then we'll need a better antenna. And that's why I went on Amazon and I picked up this Tram Model 1410 uh, Discone Scanner Antenna. This has been recommended to me as a very flexible, very wide spectrum antenna that can pick up a lot of different signals. So we're going to give this thing a shot. It's got some assembly required, but there is an instruction manual in here, and then we'll just have to find a good place to put this. Before we get to any of that, we do have to open up our spy camp radio. The power cord here is pretty chewed up, and there's exposed copper, so I don't want this shorting out. I don't want it to uh, cause a fire or cause damage to the unit. So we're going to have to replace this power cable. Okay, so aside from our busted power connector, there are definitely a few issues in here. It's very dirty. There were a few loose screws and connectors and uh, basically all this stuff fell out when I opened it up. So that's been rattling around in there. All right, we can kind of get to the wiring in here, although there's not much to work with, so I'm gonna have to be careful splicing this back in. One more issue I found, there are some loose pieces over here, and these are for a um, kind of a big phono plug. That is a scope output, so if we wanted to hook an oscilloscope up to this thing, this is where it would go, and it's these two uh, connectors. So this is kind of falling apart somehow. I'm not quite sure how to put this back together. I think I'm just gonna tape these off to the side with some electrical tape so they're not touching each other. I have an oscilloscope but it's even older than this thing and I don't know how to use it so we won't bother with that for now. So we're sitting in standby mode. I am hearing some buzzing. None of my lights are on yet. We've got an oven light and uh, 
mysterious unlabeled light. Some of the vacuum tubes do seem to be heating up. We've got some glow happening in here, so I think that's a good sign. I think we might just need to let this sit and warm up for a minute, and then we can start fiddling with the controls on the front. All right, we've let the thing warm up for a few minutes, and it's not on fire yet, which is always a plus when dealing with this old tech. Let's go ahead and flip it to operate. So we have that light coming on. There we go. We have a very faint FM radio station. We're on switch position 14, which is not mapped to that guide in the front panel, so uh, I don't quite know what the base frequency of 14 is, but uh, yeah, I don't actually know how to tell what frequency this is on at all, so that's kind of interesting. I'm operating pretty blind here. It didn't come with a manual. I haven't found a good manual for this online. I'll have to look around a little bit more, but we definitely seem to be somewhere in the FM broadcast band. All right, well, that's the closest thing I've got to a recognizable signal. I won't uh, play too much audio there. Or I'll get demonetized. <laughs> this sounds like some kind of sports ball. I'm going to let this thing warm up again so we can play with it some more. But while we're waiting for that, let's get our disc cone antenna assembled. This looks pretty straightforward. It's just supposed to look like that when we're done. Well, this looks pretty neat, and you could absolutely make this yourself out of coat hangers or welding rods or something if you didn't want to buy one. I'm pretty sure these lower radials are just wired to the outside part of the antenna, and then the upper radials are wired to the center pin. So, yeah, you can make this. I just wanted to buy one and see how it performs, and then maybe I'll make some of my own in the future. But it's a good um, starting point and reference antenna, and it had really good reviews for a wide range of receiving applications, so I wanted to give it a shot. All right, I stuck the disc cone up on the stairs to the garage roof, just to, temporarily to test out. Here, so... What's the situation? Let's see the difference between the internal antenna and the disc cone. Oh, that is noticeably worse, possibly because of all of my adapters here losing signal. I think we're going to set this guy aside for now. It's fun, it's entertaining, but... I've only figured out how to get like two FM radio stations on it, so it's not very effective or useful. It's more of a cool old thing that you put on the shelf and maybe it's got some actual uses, but without a user's manual, I have no idea where to start and no real ideas of what this can do, if anything, for me. So we're going to move up to the modern era with the Nualec Hacker F1. We've got that hooked up to a laptop. I'm going to run STR++ as the interface for it. So we're going to look at the FM broadcast band again. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, talk radio because I don't think that's copyrighted. I don't think that'll give me any uh, copyright issues. So here's what our signal strength looks like with just the stick antenna inside the room. I've hooked up the disco antenna outside. Let's see what that looks like. Big, big improvement. We have much more signal. A couple things that I have learned about software defined radios. First off, FM radio is everywhere. It is very noisy. There are harmonics of FM. There are interference patterns. You'll see it kind of all across the bandwidth. You'll be scrolling up into the microwave satellite radio band and you'll pick up FM radio. You'll be trying to look at air band AM and you'll get FM radio. You'll be trying to look down at shortwave and you'll get FM radio. So a good FM filter is a good addition to a rig like this. Here's an example of what I mean by FM interference. I'm trying to look at a satellite frequency, but we've got a harmonic of the FM band here. Cat left behind. <laughs> so we're just getting regular old broadcast radio. Now I'm not trying to say FM interference is a problem with the Hacker F1. Here we have an RTL SDR. We're getting the same thing. We've got FM broadcast channels just splattered across the airwaves. So it's more of an issue with that tram antenna, that uh, disco antenna. It's just too good at picking up FM radio. So we really need a filter in here to filter out this stuff so we can see actual signals on the frequencies we're looking at. So I have the Nualec Flamingo FM filter. Now the other thing that can be kind of fun is an LNA or low noise amplifier. This is the uh, Nualec uh, Lana Wideband. And I'm going to pop this into the chain, use this to bring out some of the fainter signals, try to increase the sensitivity of the antenna, essentially increase the amount of amplification for my personal uh, radio snooping needs. I do have a bunch of Sawbird products, which are New Alex uh, special purpose filter amplifier combos. So these have a filter built in. 
as well as an amplifier for specific frequencies. We have the Sawbird Plus NOAA, and that's designed for the NOAA weather satellites, as well as the Russian Meteor weather satellites. We have the Sawbird Plus IO for Iridium satellites. This one is good for tracking aircraft data transmissions and position reports. I haven't actually used this too much. I have a Sawbird Plus IR for Iridium satellites, and then I have kind of a naked uh, two meter Sawbird. So this one is for the 2 meter ham radio band, amateur radio frequencies between about 144 and 148 megahertz. Now a technical question that pops up with this is where do we put the FM filter? Do we want it up on the antenna? Do we want it down here right on the SDR? If we're using an amplifier like our Nualec Lana, do we want the filter before or after the amplifier? And if you go online, you will find people telling you all of those permutations. I'm going to try a few different configurations, and we're just going to see what works the best for me. People always ask, how do I learn all this radio stuff? Well, I just try it. And usually when you're seeing me on video, I'm trying it right there. I'm learning as I go along. I'm making mistakes. I'm learning through trial and error, and I'm increasing my knowledge right as I'm filming myself doing it. So first off, I'm going to try putting the amplifier up here at the antenna and the filter down at the radio. And the filter is supposed to pass DC right through it, so we can still power this with the SDR's bias T option. All right, we are unfortunately still getting just as much FM radio. So we have the same order next, antenna, then amplifier, then filter, then SDR. But this time the amplifier and the filter are both up on the roof at the antenna and it's exactly the same. All right, so now up on the roof we have antenna, then filter, then amplifier, and then the SDR down here in the shack. So let's see what that looks like. That seems to have been the magic sauce. We have eliminated the FM stuff here, so that looks great. Um, this is looking much, much better than it was. Now the Hacker F1 has a built-in LNA, which you can enable in the software. However, I'm a little scared to try that. I've heard that it's very, very sensitive and it is very easy to damage that. If you have a signal that's actually a little too strong and you have the amplifier, the built-in amplifier enabled, it can burn things out. So I'm trying to leave that disabled and not mess around with that. I've played with my gain settings, the LNA gain, the VGA gain, but again, those are still kind of a mysterious black magic thing. They bring out better signals sometimes, but other times they just give you more noise. So that's something that I'm also still learning about, especially on the Hacker F1 where it has two of those gain settings versus just one gain setting on some of the other STRs that I've messed with. So I'm finally picking up some Brazilian space pirates on a US Navy SATCOM. I can't understand what they're saying and it's a really weak signal, but uh, we are getting them where before this was just completely wiped out with the FM broadcast. So. Um, I'll turn on the audio, but I don't speak Portuguese, so I don't know what they're saying. And like I said, it's pretty scratchy. This discone antenna seems really good in the UHF bands. So we're up here in about 452 megahertz. This is a bunch of business band stuff, mostly automatic. Again, a lot of what we see here is telemetry. It's just computers talking to each other. Well, I've messed around with this so long that it's dark now, but I think this is going to be my final helicone setup. So we've got the antenna the Flamingo filter, the Lana amplifier, and then I'm just going to slip I'm just going to slip all this into a pipe. And I'm going to end up uh, just duct taping this together because I couldn't find a metal pipe that fits and these are a little bit bigger than the actual mounting ring. Now, yes, I've taken off the cone part of the heel cone so I can get to this a little easier. I'll put that back on in a minute. Now I have tried to very carefully tighten all these connections. There's a very fine line with these little adapters. There's a very fine line between not quite tight enough and too tight and you've stripped the connector out of the filter. So you gotta be really careful with these. You also have to double check before you put these little things on. The center pin has a tendency to migrate out of there. So uh, sometimes you're not actually getting a good connection. So if you're assembling something like this, you gotta be really careful with all these little connectors. I'm picking up the aircraft band a lot better now without all that uh, broadcast FM interference. I still have a lot of interference in the ham bands, but this could be from AC adapters and my own equipment. I might need to get another filter or 
play around with the placement of my antenna and my laptop a little more. So that disco and antenna seems to get decent performance all the way up into the 900 megahertz band, although there's not a lot to listen to in here without a trunk tracker and some extra software. And the Hacker F1 is definitely a cool way to scroll through a lot of the uh, spectrum here and just see all kinds of stuff at once. So we've got the ham band, we've got marine radio, we've got weather radio. We can see an entire TV station spectrum here. I'm a little disappointed at the performance in the 250-260 megahertz range. I was hoping to see those uh, SATCOM satellites a little better, but it doesn't seem to work super well for those. The thing that actually worked better was my silver play button hooked up to an old satellite dish. So oddly enough, um, the disc cone is not great at SATCOM frequencies. Now we're getting up into cell phone stuff, so we're getting entire uh, cellular data channels. Well now we've got some railroad radio traffic. Two is wrong on the north end of Hoffman. When you talk to Dave, why don't you double nine to three? We got some ham radio repeater stuff on 70 centimeter. They didn't get the third in Tampa as they thought they were going to get, but I'm still a little bad enough. I think we've got some kind of fire department pager here. Engine 817, Envelope Canada Fire, Interstate 694 and Rice Street, Accident, Box 312. Alright, that is enough random screwing around. I'm not finding anything really super interesting. I would have to sit here all day and fine-tune different channels, try to track things down, and that makes for a boring video. At least the parts where I'm sitting here just surfing around different frequencies. You guys can do that for yourselves. Pick up an SDR get a scanner antenna, uh, play around with this yourself. It is a lot of fun. There's supposed to be a slow scan television event going on right now with the International Space Station. So they're using their ham radio equipment up there to send down slow scan TV signals. Those are kind of an old school image transmission format. You get one frame at a time, very slowly. It's less television and more really inconvenient PowerPoint, but it's still kind of fun. All right, we didn't get much from that, and that was pretty much a perfect overhead pass. So, fairly disappointed in the disco and antenna. It just is not performing as well as a custom-tuned antenna for 2 meter, which I guess makes sense, but I was hoping it would do a little bit better. It seems much, much better at 450 megahertz up to 900 megahertz. It is not very good at VHF. Much better at UHF, which is fine, but uh, that kind of limits the usefulness of it for me. All right, I think it's time to wrap this video up. I'm not even sure what I'm doing with this video anymore. We've tried out a bunch of different radio technology, um, mixed results with some of it. I might have some things I want to improve in the future. The spy camp radio monitor thing, I don't know, kind of boring, doesn't seem to do much. Uh, I threw it in a corner over here. If anybody has a suggestion for how to get more out of that, I would love to know because it's a cool thing and it'd be fun to do something with it, but right now, I don't really know what the point of it is, I don't know how to use it properly, and it's just going to clutter up my garage for a while. The new Elec Hack RF1 I am really happy with. I'm still learning all the ropes with it, but it is really cool. And my disc cone antenna up there, well, it seems okay for certain bands, certain wavelengths. Again, if anyone has suggestions for that, should it be up higher, should it be on a metal pole, should I have a different filter, a different amplifier up there, how do I get the most out of that disc cone antenna? This is where the comments come in handy if somebody out there, and I know there are plenty of ham radio people out there who watch this channel, I would love to hear your suggestions on a good scanner antenna setup. Uh, throw them in the comments down below, I do read all those. Stay tuned to see what else we do with some of this equipment. I will definitely be doing more videos with the Hacker F1, I will definitely be doing more things with the disco antenna, and so you'll probably see those in future videos. Thanks to everyone out there for watching, and we'll see you next time.